Senator from Charleston, if you would place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand and repeat this oath after me. I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear that I am duly qualified, I am duly qualified according, to the Constitution of this state, according to the Constitution of this state to exercise the duties of the office, to, exercise the duties of the office to which I have been elected and that I will, to the best of my ability, discharge the duties thereof, and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of this state and of the United States. So help me God. Welcome, Senator. Mr. President, first giving honor to God, for without his blessings, grace and mercy, I would not be standing before you here today. Second, let me recognize my family. As you saw a moment ago, my wife, Kimberlyn, and my daughter, Marley, are here with me today. I want to thank them for their patience and support as we made our way through three elections. Marley voted three times. That might be a record, Senator Matthews, but just so the record is clear, she voted with her daddy, but she didn't have her card. Also, let me recognize my father and mother, Milton and Wilhelmina Kempson. My, bro my brother, uh, Milton Gary and Audra Kempson are somewhere around here, both state employees. And then we have my in-laws, who Mr. and Mrs. Vernon Davis uh, and, and Mr. Davis's mother, Thelma, who drove all the way here for this special occasion from Atlanta, Georgia. Let me also recognize my Uncle Joe in the back. He's here today. And finally, but not least, let me recognize and thank the people of District 42 for electing me as their state senator. I realize, Senator Malloy, that I have some big shoes to fill. My predecessor, indeed made significant contributions to this state. I want the citizens of District 42 to know that when I stand on this floor, I speak on your behalf. And although it is my voice that's heard, it is your words that give life to my message. To my colleagues of this august body, it is my distinct honor and privilege to join you in this place where we're here to do good on behalf of the people of the state of South Carolina. I want you to know, Mr. Grooms, that I do solemnly swear to take this job, this awesome responsibility, very seriously. My first exposure to this body was back in the early 80s when my daddy worked for then Governor Dick Riley as an executive assistant. And as a little boy, my mama would bring us to that office downstairs and I would break away and run upstairs to peek inside both chambers. My dad would come grab me and pull me away and tell me, boy, you better be quiet because those people are doing important work for the state of South Carolina in there. And little did I know that I would become one of those people, Mr. President, doing good work on behalf of the state of South Carolina in here. For those of you who don't know me, I grew up here right in South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, graduated from Columbia High School. And during the summer months, I worked for Senator, the late Senator Warren Gizet of Richland County. 
Senator Gazay would administer a federally funded program for poor children called the Summer Feeding Program. And ironically enough, back then, his office is in the same place where my office is now, room 613. I went on to matriculate at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, and finished there in 1991. And my first job was a banker in Anderson, South Carolina, branch manager of a bank. And then I went to Greenville, Senator Fair, where I lent money as a commercial lender for Bank America some of, to some of the biggest businesses back in the upstate. However, although I exceeded and succeeded at those jobs, in life, you got to find your true calling. So I entered the school right down the street, the University of South Carolina Law School, and graduated in 1999. And then after the law school, I had the esteemed and distinct honor for clerking for the late Judge Matthew Perry, civil, national civil rights icon, first African-American appointed to the federal court in South Carolina. And it was Judge Perry who taught me much about what I'm about to know about the law today. And my final, but not final mission, but after working for Judge Perry, I went on to join the law firm of Ness Motley, Lode, Holt, Richardson, and Poole in Barnwell, South Carolina. And then I transferred on to the Charleston office where I am a partner at Motley Rice who specializes in securities litigation where I represent public, state, municipal, and county pension funds all across this country. And so you see, I've had a variety of experience and a variety of places in the state, and I bring all that with me to this office. During the election, I pledged to the people of Charleston that I would come up here and work hard for them every day, that I would not cower in the face of adversity, but stand resolute to make sure that every child could get a good public education, breathe clean air, and drink fresh water, and that every citizen of this state would have the equal opportunity to achieve the American dream. For me, this is not about filing bills for political gamesmanship or randomly assigning big numbers for theatrics to show that you care. This is about the conviction from the heart. Finally, there's a hymn that we sang growing up on the choir in church. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> but the lyrics go, Senator Campbell, that made the work I do speak for me. I'm looking forward to working with each of you, both Democrat and Republican, so that the work that we do will speak volumes for the state, this great state of South Carolina. Thank you so mu very much, and may God bless you. Senator from Lexington, what purpose do you rise, sir? President, I ask unanimous consent that the words of the Senator from Charleston be placed in the journal. Without objection.